think uh, we're going to make a slightly early start. Uh, let me introduce the first speaker of the afternoon second session, uh, Professor Alexander uh, Kraus from uh, Slovak University of Technology. And the topic is uh, inoculated high-speed steel. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear uh, colleagues, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, express my uh, gratitude to all the organizers of this exciting conference and uh, particularly to Henry Badisha for giving me such wonderful possibility to introduce to you uh, my adventures in the field of high-speed steels. High-speed steels are iron-based alloys with high content of both uh, uh, carbide formers and carbon and with a long history. Despite the strong competition with uh, cemented carbides, uh, cutting ceramics and the super uh, hard tool materials, uh, high-speed steels have persisted to this day as a key tool material in the manufacture of certain types of cutting tools. Uh, <clears throat> this can be primarily attributed to the highest values of uh, toughness and strength compared to other tool materials. With respect to high-speed steels, uh, cutting tools are commonly manufactured of uh, root material and are shaped to the uh, required uh, uh, geometries by its machining. Uh, the metallurgical process with respect to uh, the road high-speed steel involves high reduction rate hot plastic deformation uh, of cast ingots uh, into uh, round rods. That results in high production cost of root materials. In contrast, in contrast uh, precision casting, allowing near net shape uh, work pieces can reduce the volume of the roughing operation and the large uh, the depths of cut. And as a result, the material consumption in the, uh, in the, manufacturing, in the manufacture of uh, cutting tools. As for uh, service properties, cast high-speed steels due to the presence of the eutectic carbide networks at the primary matrix grind boundaries have considerably uh, higher wear resistance but lower toughness compared to uh, commercial uh, road high-speed steels of a similar chemical composition. Uh, therefore, in order to provide good all-round uh, uh, performance, the toughness of cast high-speed steels uh, needs to be required. Uh, in the case of Cast high-speed steels, toughness uh, improvement can, can be achieved using a small addition of different uh, elements to the melt, which can act there as inoculants, uh, with, uh, thus resulting uh, in microstructure refinement. With this is in mind, the main purpose of the present work was to investigate the inoculation uh, effect of powder additions of uh, tungsten and tungsten ca carbide uh, in uh, steel, in cast steel of uh, AISI M2 grade. Before casting, the <coughs> inoculating additions, uh, inoculating treatment of the parent steel was carried out using powder additions in uh, which uh, were added to the melt in the ranges as shown in this slide. The molten steel was poured into ceramic molds and uh, cast in gods were uh, 1.2 kilogram in uh, mass. Uh, heat treatment of the study steel involved uh, annealing, astenitizing, quenching, and tempering. Uh, the conditions for certain uh, heat treatment operations are also shown in this uh, slide with respect to annealing, austenitizing, quenching, and triple tempering, which uh, uh, completed the heat treatment of the studied steels. In this uh, figure, micrographs for the parent and the inoculated steel show that 
uh, inoculating additions favor uh, the refinement of the um, uh, primary grains of the matrix and simultaneously a transition from the uh, extremely slender uh, columnar dendrites in the parent stills to the equi-exed morphology in the inoculated stills. This figure shows that strong refinement effect in the matrix has been achieved in all the inoculated stills. Uh, the above mentioned st structural changes with respect to the matrix can be uh, uh, referred, first of all, to an increase in the number of nuclei in the melt uh, under the effect of inoculating additions. Uh, in particular, EDS analysis uh, uh, indicated the presence of the tungsten-rich carbide phase in the bulk of the uh, primary matrix uh, grain, uh, grains. As for, carbide, uh, or as for carbides, according to X-ray diffraction uh, analysis, uh, three uh, carbide types uh, were uh, detected in the S-cast structure of the studied steels. As shown in this figure, for example, for the parent steel, it at M6C, M2C, and MC. The typical morphology of the M6C uh, eutectic carbide is fish bone, which is known to be unaffected by chemical composition or cooling rate. Uh, morphology of M2C eutectic carbide uh, in M2 high speed steels can vary widely depending on minor additions of inoculants. As a reflection of these two types of morphology for M2C carbide have been revealed in the uh, S-CAS microstructure of the studied steels, uh, namely uh, rod-like and lamella. Uh, pay attention, please, that uh, vanadium and tungsten, like other carbide formers in this type of still are uniformly distributed in all the above mentioned types of eutectic carbides. You can see here and you can see here also. Uh, the typical chemical composition of eutectic carbides are shown in this uh, table, which also illustrates the main differences in the contents of the principal carbide formers with respect to the certain type of eutectic carbide. You can see, for example, that M6C carbide uh, has the lowest content of both vanadium and chromium, and on the other hand, the largest content of uh, iron. Uh, MC eutectic uh, carbide uh, is featured by the uh, highest content of vanadium. And M2C uh, carbide compared to M6C carbide uh, has uh, evidently higher content of both vanadium and chromium and lower content of uh, iron. It's very important because the origin of eutectic carbides and specific chemical composition of these eutectic carbides uh, control uh, behavior of this carbide during uh, heat treatment. This uh, figure uh, shows how the uh, inoculating additions uh, have affected the formation of different types of eutectic uh, at solidification as well as their volume fractions in the s cast microstructure of the studied steels. Uh, it is seen from this uh, figure that compared to the parent steel, both uh, uh, inoculating uh, uh, additives have completely suppressed the formation of MC eutectic and uh, at the same time, favorite the formation of the M6C eutectic 
uh, at the expense of the M2 CU tactic, uh, primarily with rod-like morphology. Uh, this tendency is more evident in the case of uh, pure tungsten because uh, uh, the dissolution of uh, tungsten carbide simultaneously <coughs> uh, leads to enrichment of the melt in carbon, which in contrast to tungsten is known to favor the formation of M2C eutectic. Uh, in the microstructure of the steel, inoculated with uh, uh, 0.6 percent tungsten, uh, the individual, individual uh, particles of the primary M23 C six carbide uh, have been also revealed in the S-cast microstructure of this steel. Uh, uh, with respect to thermal stability, M6C and MC carbides are considered as stable phases, uh, whereas M2C carbide is a metastable one. Uh, as um, can we see from this figure the typical fishbone morphology of this carbide and uniform distribution uh, of vanadium in it have not changed after austenitizing. That is not the case for the M2C carbide. During austenitizing, uh, vanadium diffuses out of the M2C carbide and interacting with uh, surrounding austenitic matrix form, forms uh, vanadium-rich carbide MC. You can see uh, simultaneously the precipitation of MC carbide uh, uh, causes transition of the initial M2C carbide into M6C uh, carbide and both result in the formation of such a uh, uh, mixture of M6C and MC carbides. You can see that in, in this uh, mixture, uh, the uh, distribution of vanadium is extremely, extremely uh, heterogeneous. That reflects its key role in the decomposition process. After M2C carbide decomposition, uh, uh, Two types of eutectic carbides can be observed in the uh, microstructure of the, the studied st steels after heat treatment, as shown in this figure. Besides eutectic carbides, secondary carbides are also present in uh, the microstructure of high-speed steel after heat treatment. Uh, for example, TEM investigations uh, uh, indicated the presence of two types of the secondary carbides in the microstructure of the steel inoculated with nil point six percent tungsten, large one and small one. Uh, the large uh, carbides uh, are observed uh, as a rule <coughs> in the bulk of the metric grains, uh, while uh, small carbides uh, preferentially uh, uh, precipitate at the prior austenite uh, grain boundaries. Both the carbides were identified as uh, M6C phase. Uh, in general, the cutting ability of high-speed steels depends on, on a combination of properties, among which the, more, uh, the four most important Ones are hardness, red hardness, toughness, and wear resistance. Uh, the typical values for the hardness and for uh, red hardness are shown in these uh, figures. And uh, from these uh, figures, it is seen that inoculation uh, didn't affect significantly uh, either the hardness and uh, the red hardness. In contrast, this uh, figure shows that all the inoculated steels uh, have considerably greater toughness compared to the parent steel. That can be referred to 
uh, the following changes in th their microstructure. First of all, uh, uh, the decrease in matrix grain size, then uh, 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 transitions from columnar dendrites to equi-exed uh, grains, uh, refinement of the eutectic colonies and carbides, and finally, the formation of uh, the formation of more uh, interrupted and thin eutectic carbide network. On the other hand, uh, the formation of more uh, of more uh, continuous and coarse eutectic carbide uh, leads to the a deterioration in toughness, as shown, for example, for the steels inoculated with the largest uh, amount of both. Uh, additives. Uh, this uh, confirms the key role of eutectic carbide in uh, cast high speed fracture at, in the uh, heat treated condition. Uh, eutectic carbide initiate, uh, uh, act as initiation sites for, uh, uh, for cracks which are formed as a rule at the carbide matrix interface uh, by uh, its uh, decohesion. Later, these micro cracks le uh, uh, initiate fracture uh, that preferentially occurs at, uh, by a debonding mechanism at the carbide matrix interface or or end by cracking of eutectic carbides. Uh, the general uh, refinement of the microstructure in all the inoculated steels benefits uh, in enhanced wear resistance that in turn uh, reduces the wear intensity as shown in this uh, figure. Uh, in this, for example, in this uh, figure, it is seen that one surface uh, of the uh, tracks for the parent steel uh, evidently differs from that for the uh, inoculated steel, in a steel inoculated with 0.6% uh, 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 tungsten carbide by stronger uh, surface grooving and uh, severe and deeper adhesive uh, failure of the oxide uh, scales. Uh, the ability of uh, eutectic carbide network uh, to resist uh, wear uh, can be probably associated not only with its uh, continuity and uh, the th thickness, but also with the uh, uh, morphology and uh, this morphology of the eutectic carbides which form this uh, network. Conclusions are as the following. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Kors. And then we are op open for questions. Can I speak? Yeah. This? Yeah. Thank you for your interesting talk and for uh, going into the direction of solving a very, very big problem in this, the field of uh, any kind of a high-speed uh, steel. I wonder whether you tested several uh, um, powder grain sizes. You know that as for tungsten or for tungsten carbide, you can powders, you can have powders, commercial powders, as fine as 0.2. Uh, mi uh, micrometers, which is 200 uh, nanometers, I believe, for instance, I think Herman Stark or the other, or uh, coarser powders. I believe, uh, but I have not any element, that there should be an influence also 
of the particle size you are uh, addicting. Y yes, of course. It's uh, a very important thing because the size of uh, carbides, uh, even in uh, S-cast state or, for example, in root material after uh, uh, deformation, hot plastic deformation, are very important. Is very important size. And, uh, for example, it's possible to uh, improve, for example, carbide heterogeneity by using powder metallurgy. But in this case, the price is very, very high. And for example, compared to the uh, common root high-speed steels, the applications, application of powder metallurgy high-speed steel is very, very low. As, first of all, as for cutting tools, maybe in another uh, fields, the application of powder metallurgy steels are higher, it is higher, but uh, in as for cu cutting tools, no. Thank you. Uh, Harry? Hi. We, uh, I don't know if I understood well. You put WC powders, and uh, two questions. One is do they dissolve completely when you put them in? Do they? Uh, once more, please. D does the WC dissolve in the molten metal? Uh -huh. Yes, it's, it's also uh, uh, in some case the problem. It's very important to introduce these uh, particles in the melt in, in proper way. I think that Professor Badesha knows it because he introduced, for example, ceramic particles, uh, and it's the main problem. And we use special uh, technology for introducing these uh, uh, powder particles. Uh, they were uh, preheated in uh, vacuum uh, furnace uh, and then were covered with uh, thin f uh, film of pure uh, iron and then introduced in the melt. And, and you were able to avoid the dissolution of the tungsten carbide? Yes. Yes, because you see, if, if we try to dissolve, for example, only, only pure uh, uh, carbides, for example, uh, WC carbide, it's very difficult because the temperature is very high. But if you immerse them into the melt, the conditions for the dissolutions are quite another. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, you made a comparison. Uh, you have very good results. You showed all the inoculated uh, variants were really have better Thank improvement you. compared to the parent material. Have you also made comparisons to material produced by sort of traditional metallurgy, not not uh, as cost structures, but what would the comparison be then? Uh, we compared, for example, cutting pro uh, properties of our cast uh, uh, tools uh, with uh, uh, the tool uh, made of uh, commercial uh, root high-speed steels. And the results were very good. But it's necessary to, uh, to stress that it's impossible to use cast metal as, uni uh, as universal metal. It's necessary to search special conditions for this uh, uh, tool. For example, geometry of the tool is very, very important. And cutting conditions are very, very important. It's necessary to use this uh, 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 cast metal only in the conditions where, for example, uh, strong abrasion uh, where is dominated and, for example, where the level of dynamic loads is very, very low. And then such tool is very, very good for, uh, in order to improve in general durability in this case. Well, my, my well, question is regarding the, the, the shape of, of what you were casting, because if you don't dissolve the carbides, the, the, side, the effect of the carbide will depend on the distribution, the distribution will depend on the flow conditions, and uh, the, the degree of refinement also. So these results are, should be 
uh, link it with the conditions of processing. I understand. Y you see, uh, we uh, used these uh, uh, additions in order to, uh, to get special uh, specimens of different shape, but in general. But when we cast, cast, uh, we cast uh, uh, tool, it's possible to, to get, for example, the shape practically uh, which is ready for, for uh, using. It's necessary only to grind, for example, because really it's a uh, near net shape. Cutters, for example, different. Uh, in the first, I, I will show you. Maybe you didn't see it. Here. It's cast tool, for example. Yeah. Yes, I understand. My question is uh, the distribution of the particles uh, inside that, that piece will be different than the distribution of the particles in a rod? Y or, uh, so y yes, yes. Yes, the yes. yes. It, it depends, for example, on the uh, weight of these cutters, for example. Yes, of course. Be because the uh, uh, geometrical, geometrical parameters of, uh, the, of the cast tool is very, very important also. The lady at the middle. Could you pass? Excuse me. Uh, could you say a few words about structure after casting and after tempering? Yes. Uh, because you are speaking only about carbides, but it okay. seems to me that yes. the Martin side and the red eye don't stand on the Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's very valuable uh, no, 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 note. Okay. Thank you very much. Not only carbides change their yes. Shape yes. And so okay. Well, uh, it's very and, uh, important to have. Extra one question. Yes. When you are speaking about the grain size, what do you mean about grains? What grains? Okay. In our case, that was uh, grains, so called primary grains. Primary grains. Because you see, for example, uh, uh, there are uh, grains of uh, prior. Uh, yes, uh, austenite, and, and so on. As for structure, when we cast into ceramic uh, molds, the structure after casting is bionite and retained austenite. If to chill mold, certainly martensite plus retained austenite. And after any, after, yes. And, and after annealing, certainly a mixture of uh, special carbides and ferrite, and after uh, quenching martensite, and plus, for example, it possible uh, from 10 till 30 percent of retained austenite. And for this reason, high speed steels are tempered uh, using multi tempering cycle. In order to uh, effectively to reduce the uh, volume of retained austenite. Okay, there's a question online. Uh, yes, uh, a question from AK Steel Research. Uh, ferrite grain inoculate or carbide inoculate? That's the question from. Uh, yes, of course. First, for, first of all, for inoculating uh, ferrite because I told it in my uh, presentation that it's very important to have these uh, uh, nucleation sites for ferrite, because ferrite, in the case of high-speed steels, is the primary solid solution which uh, uh, precipitate from the melt. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any other questions regarding this one? Okay, if not, let's thank again the speaker. Thank you.